Today, if it's a typical day in the life of America, there's about 20 million meetings occurring during this day no. in the United States. Is that board meetings? Meetings. meetings. People yeah. coming together in groups to meet around the world. They could be any kind of thing. Yeah. Like Wait, how many? One on one, like 20 one million meeting. meetings taking place in the whole day. world? Any, yeah. Just in America, yeah. any given day. <coughs> now, when most people hear that they have to go to a meeting, <laughs> what's your reaction? Yeah. Uh, Fun. Will there be? Yeah. 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 I got a meeting. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. let's go. One, two, three, four. And, um, and uh, so many people find meetings to be a waste of time. So many people do. Yeah, Naomi, you don't? You say you've been in some well, good... Some well, some are. Like yeah, yeah. Um, so many people feel silent in meetings. Right? There's lots of things that occur that are destructive rather than constructive and not productive. So what I'd like you to think about for just a minute, reflect on the worst meeting you've ever been to. Um, I call this meeting nightmares. So think of a think of a bad meeting, and what was happening that made it really either uncomfortable. You wish you weren't there. You you couldn't stay focused at all. It didn't matter. So what is it about meetings that aren't going well that makes them such a waste of time? What, what makes meetings ineffective? Just one thing for per person. What? Close-minded people. Close people. So I guess lack of caring. Side competitions? No one's showing up. <laughs> physically or mental, or mentally and emotionally? Physically. Yeah. Okay. People, don't even, people don't even come. Well, you can have a but that could be a very good meeting. Yeah, for yourself. <laughs> Just think awesome. And not really, you know, analyzing, going over and questioning these things that make a difference. So superficial positive feedback without any substantive critical feedback, without the, like making it. the time for it. Some pretty good reasons not to want to be looking forward to a next meeting <laughs> if it's like that, right? Because my typical response when I work with teachers and I ask them, what do you, what do you, what's your thinking when you hear there's going to be a meeting at the school today? Oh, no, not another one. It's very common that people find meetings to be a, a waste of time. And what we want to create is meetings that are substantive. I mean, we want to look at your, at your list where we start on time, where it's always relevant, where we stay focused, where everyone shows up because it's important, where we build, we take the time to build commitment. What would be, the, the, these are, the, these are the, the nightmares, what would be the, the norms, the commitments that we'd want to have, just, and what we want to do is not one for each of these, but what, are the, what would it be the norms or agreements we want to have to counter these things from happening? What we're talking about now is what do we want to set up as the agreements based on what, we, what make them unproductive and irrelevant? What would we want to put in place to make sure these things don't happen? Um, establishing and maintaining a safe and, um, a safe and cooperative environment. I would say a packet that um, includes basically what everyone is expected to bring to the meeting and what they're required to do and then have everyone sign off on it so that they know exactly what their requirements are and they can't get out of it by saying, well, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing because the packet's right from So providing the structure, structure. Right? Yeah. providing the structure for people to come prepared for the meeting. That way they can't get out of it. So let me just give you some suggestions. You don't have to write, write this. Um, I hope you're taking notes, right, of this of this conversation in terms of your own facilitation and your own meetings. Um, but for any decision that's made in the meeting, very often there's no follow through, right, which is part of the problem. So for any decision made, I, I ask three questions. What are the next steps? Who's going to take them? And by when? So you have an action plan for any decision made. There's also three other questions. Who needs to know what the decision
decision is, who's going to tell them, and by when? And then at the start of the next meeting, you do a check-in. Make sure those things happen. Build, build that lateral accountability into the group, so you have action planning for any next steps that need to take place, and you have the communication loop to make sure that anyone who wasn't there is going to be informed so they come prepared, and who tells them is a really strategic decision. When we say who's going to tell them, it should be a colleague, an ally, someone that that person knows and respects, so they're getting the, 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 a, a positive and appropriate spin, not someone who they're going to disagree, you know, not, a, not value their opinion. So who's going to tell them is a strategic question. The, the facilitator's role to keep, to make it a safe place, safe enough to encourage risk taking and critical feedback. When people leave, have a packet of responsibilities or a plan for moving forward on every next step that needs to be taken and everybody that needs to be informed. And then following up, checking in. Did we do, did we do our, did we come prepared? Have we done what we needed to do? If not, no blame, no shame. But it gets done before the next meeting. Right? It, it, no, uh, James Comer is one of the great child psychologists and there's a lot of Comer schools around the world. And one, he only has three norms. And the first one, no blame, no shame. So if someone drops the, we all drop the ball. We all forget to do something important. It's not about blaming the shame, it's about making sure we support each other to get it done. What is that two? Oh, I wish you hadn't asked. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know Google that I can, I don't, I don't know we'll that Google I can. Google it and let it Okay, um, have a really clear agenda. Um, check in and make and, and, the, and the time flow. Make sure as a facilitator that you're aware of the agenda and pacing the agenda, so that you oh that you get to it. One thing that I, I usually do in agendas is I have other right after the opening moves, so that if something has come up or something is significant that we need to pay attention to, but the, I didn't know as a planner and didn't put it on the, usually you hear that at the end of the meeting, and there's no time to work with it. So I usually ask, here's the agenda, is there anything else pressing? That it's, it's, oh, we didn't, I'm sorry, I'm moving really fast now, and I really don't have to, we still have time for lunch, so I'm gonna slow it. I got into that rush. <laughs>